How did you get involved with this series? Um, what was the process? Um, I actually, um, I got involved in that way that uh, Philip actually saw a trailer that I did for a movie called Tommy. Um, that's actually being sold here as well, I think. Um, and sort of said to Henrik, okay, we might have found the girl to play Eva. And they contacted me after that. And um, I was really intrigued by the project right away because it wasn't like anything I've ever heard about before. And uh, for me, it was really, uh, I became so happy to meet such passionate guys with this kind of strong vision. Uh, and that's been fighting for, you know, to make this series for so long. Um, and that was really, you, you got a lot of energy from, from, from those guys, yeah. And Philip, t tell us a little about the, pro the, the project, because this, um, this is Henrik's first directing, producing, writing job. How do you, how do you know Henrik, and what was the, the starting point for putting this series together? What was the inspiration? Uh, well, uh, Henrik and I have been working, we've been working together for about eight years. Um, and so he came to me, I've been actually his editor before, uh, and then producing a bit for him. Uh, and he came to me about five years ago with a small short story, um, which is actually the basis for the whole George Scott series. Uh, and, and, you know, you know, what do you think about this? And I was like, I love it. Let, let's do something. Uh, and... Uh, he, he got the idea from, um, we've been doing commercials, me and him, for many years. Um, and, you know, always wanted to uh, write our own, something from ourselves, not just filming a, a, a bottle of water every day, you know, uh, and something with a story. And so, you know, and after a while, he, he kind of like, okay, well, someone, no one is going to give me a story, so I guess I have to write it myself. So... He took a lot of um, memories from his grandmother, actually, who, who brought him out in the forest and, and would tell him small stories like, we should probably take this way, not that way. Oh, what's that way? Well, we just don't want to disturb that path. Uh, and if they were going into the water, let's go in smoothly. Don't, we don't want to wake him up. Wake who up? You know, it's like, uh, we don't want, just, just go in and take it easy. Uh, just having the respect for nature, um, and and that sort of in, in we have you know these stories in Sweden. Um, I guess a lot of countries has different types of stories and fairy tales, and, and so he sort of took that in to our modern real world. You know why do we have those stories? What do they really come from? Uh, and so uh, we, um, we actually did a, a test shoot, uh, a, like a small short pilot for the, the story. Uh, and because I haven't done anything like this before either, um, and as a producer, that was amazing to get something that was so unique and, and you know, it was, it was kind of easy to get people on board on helping us with this. Um, but, so we shot this and we went to SVT and they, they loved it. Um, and, you know, having no experience of creating something this big or something this long was, a, you know, it was, of course, a, it was hard. It was like, well, you, you can't do this. You can only shoot, you know, small films about water balls. Uh, but with this film or this short, uh, it was about 50 minutes long, they were like, oh, maybe you can, you know. Um, so then we got some money to start writing, you know, all the scripts, and and then finally we got the green light, and they because you know they really loved the story, and um, and it turned out really well. <laughs> now, Mo, how do you approach a character like Eva? Because she's got a, there's, it, it's as we know, it's a kind of a strange story. It's not straightforward. Um, was she difficult to play? Did you find her at all hard to? Because she's got a lot of issues. She has father issues. She has she's lost her daughter. What could you tell me about her character that, that, that stayed with you? She's really a character that's kind of constructed by opposites. She's both this uh, competent negotiator for the police force and at the same time this grieving mother. And I think her main issue is that uh, not knowing really what happened to her daughter, she hasn't gotten closure at all. So I think... Um, 
her journey throughout the series is a journey towards closure in some way. Um, so I really tr have to both learn how to drive a car and to shoot a gun and all of this like physical aspect of her, but I also did a lot of re research about the grieving process and I met actually a mother who had lost a child and they didn't know what happened to the child and that was really, really powerful, you know, that meeting and realizing that this fiction that we're telling is somebody's real story and we have to sort of portray Eva in a way that's respectful regarding that. So it was like, it was a big process to try, kind of like get into her head and get into um, her, her story and background. And when you read the script, did, I, I, I don't know about you, but I had a preconception about this story. I thought she's a hostage negotiator. I thought that would be her story, but that's very quickly out of the picture. Were you surprised by what you read and were you allowed to read the whole script, all the scripts at the time? Yeah, and it was such, such a treat that the guys had like, uh, clear story from the beginning and I know where it was going to end as well because sometimes when you make a series they can have like three scripts and you, you have no idea where it's going next and if it's going to be like the quality if it's going to be as good as the first three episodes uh, and now I had the, the whole story and just reading the scripts I was so amazed by the twists and turns and I was like oh my god I need out to, what happens what happens next I need to find out uh, because they constructed these really great endings that always make you want to see more. And I felt that even reading the scripts that I, I wanted to know what happened next. Well, Philip, I wonder also, did you, were you aware of what preconceptions people would have of a Nordic noir thriller? Uh, yes, uh, we really did, and, and that was sort of, uh, uh, we planned that, you know, um, because we wanted to construct it as a Nordic noir crime, uh, and, and in many sense it is, but it also takes sort of a different turn, as you might have noticed at the end of the, the, the first episode. And, and it keeps, you know, it's sort of, um, it's, it's, it sort of takes a different pathway than you would have ex expected. Uh, and that really, we, we think, is, could be sort of a new wave of, of, of Nordic Noir, but, but also just su surprising the audience. Uh, people have seen a lot of stories, uh, you know, constructed in the same way, and, and we wanted to have the audience not knowing at all what's going to happen in the next uh, episode, and and um, I really think we succeeded with that. So, you know, creating a series with the crime part uh, was important to have, you know, a sort of a uh, a real, a realistic touch to it. It's like th this is happening for real. These people in the series are experiencing th something that we would, you know, react. What, what's going on? And, and they do, uh, and, and as one would, you know. Uh, so yeah, really important to have um, a, a story that that starts out somewhere and then going a different direct direction. Um, the, I forget the name of the town that Eva goes Sil to. Silverhead. I, I think there's a reason I attempted, <laughs> didn't attempt to say it. But um, it's, it's a character in the movie, it's a, sorry, in the series. It's, how, how did you find that place and where is it shot? What, what did it bring to the shoot? Yeah, it's definitely a character in the series and also, of course, the nature is a character in, in the series. Um, that is outside Stockholm, about an hour and a half, called Sala, a little place um, with, where we found these great, uh, you know, forests, but also the, the town itself is so beautiful. Uh, and it has, you know, it has everything in it. There's a police station, there, there's a, a big hospital. They, you know, they have everything that a big city would have in a, a smaller version. And that was really important for the story. Uh, but there was one problem, there was no mountains there. Uh, so we actually, if you saw all the mountains or the, the hills, those are not there for real. We went up north and shot that different period and then also put them in post-production after. So if there's a character with a mountain behind her or him, it's not really there. Um, but that was really important because in that way, because Silverhead doesn't exist. It's, it's only in our store it does. And that, so that, that really worked out good. 
So people would, you know, not know where it is. Shot. Where, where is this place? So, well, well, hey, it's Silver Heart, you know. Uh, and, and so we were really happy that we, we were be able to sort of take Sala and then move it up north to a place you never heard of. Um, Mo, how was it shooting there? Um, it, was, it was really special because you're, you're kind of used to shooting in studio, especially when it's such a, a long series. But we lived in this little village for like eight months and nothing is in studio, everything is on set. And the set designer, Augustine Moreau, is like a genius. He can create magic from like anything. Uh, so every day was like stepping into this kind of special universe. Uh, and of course that really helped with the, the, the feeling that my character goes through and and imagining the, this universe to be real. Um, I, I know we can't really talk about the series as, as it develops, but um, how did this, the, um, the setting help you deal with some of the, the, the more supernatural elements that we appear to be seeing in, in, in the story? Um, yeah, it's... Is, uh, it rich, is it an area that's rich in kind of folk tales? That was actually my first question when I got the part, because I was like, I want to be involved with it. it, it seems amazing, you know, when you speak about it, it's amazing, but if the special effects aren't any good, <laughs> this is going to turn to shit. Um, and then Hendrik said, oh no, but you know, and I was like, who's making the special effects? Because in Sweden, we're not really used to that kind of way of, of making a movie. We don't have that special effects in our country, I thought. And he was like, no, no, you needn't worry. It's my brother. <laughs> so I was like, really? But then I found out that he's been making these uh, large productions like abroad, and he's like one of the best. So, and, and he's a part of, of George Scott, I think, making the audience believe in the world, because if the special effects hasn't been any good, you know, they, you, they wouldn't have believed the, the universe. So you're suggesting there's more special effects to come? Oh, yes. <laughs> and Philip, was that important to you if, to, to have that seamless quality to this? Because it, does, I, it seems a very plausible real world. Yeah, yeah, we, we needed everything to be 100% believable. I mean, if you see one frame, that, that, that's not for real, you, you sort of everything drops. Uh, so we worked really hard and uh, as she said, uh, 49 out of 150 days were on location. So everything that you see is for real. Uh, I mean, if there is, um, uh, you'll see later in the series, these sort of more special locations, they are actually really built. You could, if there's a ground, a hole in the ground uh, that people walk into, they actually do it. We actually dug a hole in the ground, which to, uh, you know, <laughs> from, from our, where we come from in the commercial world, you know, our drama crew that we sort of, you know, took in with us, who are more used to drama, they don't, you don't do that. You don't dig a hole in the ground. You, no, 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 we pretend that there's a hole in the ground and then we fake the camera. We're like, why can't we just dig a hole? I mean, it's like, well, we don't do that. Like, uh, uh, let me call this guy. Hey, do you have a, you know, I need a hole here. Can you dig it? Like, yeah, sure. Okay, good. See, now we have a hole. Let's continue filming. Uh, so I, that was actually in the, in, in the production. We sort of came with this, uh, I guess, sort of naive uh, uh, way of thinking that, you know, we could just film it the way it should be filmed, right? And we did, and I, I think we actually showed the, the crew that was used to uh, uh, the TV series that you can, you can make it for real. Um, and, and so, you know, most of the, uh, well, the locations are for real, but, you know, the special effects that we have that's gonna be a bit more later uh, are, you know, you can't tell one frame that something is, is, uh, is, isn't there. That seems like a good place to end. <laughs> Thank you, Philip, and thank you, Moa. Thank you. Thank you.